zero seven distractions. Very nice. Yes, I approve of that, Carl. Good, good choice there. Now, Steve. Yes. Carl came round to my flat. Mm. Uh, it was Tuesday night, wasn't it? Nice place. Now, um, thanks. Now, last week after the show, I think you guys were in the time you were in the toilet. Right, Carl got out the lottery uh, ticket that he bought. He went. I'm feeling really confident tonight. Right. He's going, I, I was going, I laughed. He went, no, no, seriously. He said, look at the numbers. And I looked at him and I think they were four, six, eight, twenty, thirty six, forty eight, weren't they? He was going, I just got a feeling about those. I'm not sure. He went, although, you know, my girlfriend said that, you know, if, if I won the lottery, we'd probably split up because we like such different things, meaning she likes to travel and he doesn't. And so he said, he said, so what I said was, well, if I win, then I won't tell you. I'll just <laughs> treat you a little bit more. <laughs> Brilliant. That's brilliant logic. That is great. Anyway. I'll look um, after her. Oh, I, I imagine you take care of her, yeah. Yeah, 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 you're a good guy. How would you do it then? You just, you just sneak little gifts in, slowly over many years. Yeah. You don't yeah. think she'd rumble the fact that you, like, don't work anymore and drive a Lamborghini? Well, I'd still do this, I think. What, just, like, as a kind of beard, as a cover story? Yeah, just So you'd pretend to come to work, but maybe off partying and stuff in the daytime. Yeah. Clever. Now, he didn't win. Okay. I phoned him up Saturday night, he went, one number. <laughs> uh, one number. I think it was eight, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, it was they all, there was a lot of eights on my piece of paper, wasn't there? So I think it was either an eight or an 18 or a 48. And he, went, and he, uh, and he was disappointed, he said, waste of time. I went, well, he said, no, waste of time. He said, I've worked it out. I went, go on. He went, there are 26 letters in the alphabet. I went, yeah. He went, think how many words you can make out of them. He went, there are 48 numbers on the lottery. I went, yeah, 60 million to one. He went, yeah. <laughs> Not I worth looked, it. I looked into that in the week, right? <laughs> and there's, there's even less letters in the Welsh alphabet. They've only got 20. <laughs> and yet they've got loads of words as well. So even 20, the chances. If there was 20 numbers and you had to pick six winners, it'd still be really... Unlikely. Yeah. 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 You should be a mathematician. And anyway, so we got talking about it. We got talking. That was me, him, and Jane around there. And uh, and I told Jane that he said about oh, if you won the lottery, you know, he didn't like travel. And she went, "Why well, do you like travelling?" And uh, he went, "Well, I'm re I don't like planes. I don't. I'm really scared of planes and that." And she went, "Well, if you won the lottery, you could have a world cruise." And he went, "No." She went, "Don't fancy." I went, "No." He said, "If you go on a world cruise, what do you do next year?" <laughs> 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 oh, Genius. it's brilliant logic, Carl. Huh? It's, it's but you know, you know, on the world cruise, you don't actually see the whole world. I mean, you. And if you did, it's not like saying, "Well, I don't want to see that twice." <laughs> Do you know it what is I mean? the world. It is the world. It's a lot. It's a lot to see. Mm. Um, and did, was, did it, it never? Sorry, did it never dawn on you before about the numbers and the lottery? Is this? The, have you been playing this for years and thinking that you had a good chance? That it was just like you and a handful of other people that were doing it. Just as much chance as everyone else. But then when you actually sit down and think about sure. what you're doing, he's done it again this week. He went off doing it one more time and he showed me the numbers and he went, they look a bit more healthy, don't they? <laughs> oh. What numbers are you going for this week? It's all right, laughing, but we'll see you tonight. Yeah. Go on then. You know, people, if they people do this and they win, if you take these out and people do these, you'll have to share it with someone. It's alright though, isn't it? Give them a chance. Tell them what. Give them, Give people a clue. What numbers are you doing, Carl? No, I'm not. I'm not going to tell them them all. <laughs> I'll, I'll give you four. I've got. I've got five, nine, twelve, and twenty-six. <laughs> okay. You're not going to give us the other two? No. Because that's, that's, that's a big difference, isn't it? What are the what? four's worth about eight grand in it? But if I give them the other two and it wins. Yeah. What are the, those four numbers again? Five, nine, twelve, twenty-six. Also coming up is Carl's GCSE results. He took them in 1988, I think. Okay. And we've got we've phoned his score, we tracked him down. We've got Carl's GCSE. Is, what's, what, what did I say? <laughs> How yeah. many did you get? Rick? Clinic, walking with E. Sorry about that earlier. You know, I like to keep a tight, slick ship, and that lets us all down, doesn't it? When something goes wrong with the shoddy equipment in this place. Mm -hmm. why, why don't you buy some new stuff? You must be earning a bit of money now, wasn't you? We've got a few listeners now, we get adverts, don't we? Why don't they just buy a new CD player? You can go down to Richard Sounds and get one for 50 quid. 
Yeah. I don't know. It's I suppose when you're starting off, you, you, you save the money you make first before you spend it. I go down a record and tape exchange, take all the four non-blondes and excess stuff you've got. <laughs> and the record label. You'll be able to get an old CD go. player. 25 minutes this week it took. Well, the four, four, the four non-blondes of the <laughs> yeah. I think we should make that some sort of calling to win feature. Carl, are we using the equipment that you used to use when you had uh, Pilkey's Making Music, the DJ outfit that you I love around? that. It, that was Carl Pilkerton and someone making? What Colin, was Colin Making. Colin, Colin Making. making. Co- Pilkey's Making Music. Genius. That's are we right. using that same equipment? Did you earn any money? Um, I, I paid for the tube lights and that. I, I sort of covered my costs. Did you? Did and you pay tax up. on that? And then, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. That's what they got Al Capone on, innit? <laughs> it is, yeah. That's yeah. right. Don't worry about the music policy. We're sorting that out. We've got some Verve coming up. we got uh, some Jimmy Webb. we got some Nick Cave. We've got some Amy Mann. We've got some Travis Corner Shop. You know what I mean? We're, we're yeah. sorting some ourselves out. We just big start. Names, we haven't started yet. We're just starting getting going. we got exa- uh, Carl's... GCSE result. Let's just do it now. Should we do it now? Well, let's. I think we should have a, a white van man session. Oh, white van. Because I think man people person. tune in for the white van man. Yeah, session. Yeah, people who haven't tuned in, they don't know. If people aren't familiar with this, uh, <laughs> the Sun runs a column uh, every day, which is uh, asking some punter from the street their views on the week's big uh, events, and we just thought, why not hijack that idea but apply it to Carl Pilkington? I Carl. Seen much news again this week. You've not seen much news. Don't worry, I'm sure you have an opinion on just it. Just have you, just give, give us it from your heart. So gladiator. Okay, so, well, on the subject of gladiator, what do you make of Russell Crowe's appalling behaviour at the BAFTAs? This is, um, I heard a bit about this. This is, um, when he, he got some director or something, because... Director or producer and threatened them, because they cut his bit, didn't they? they yeah, they cut a poem that he'd done during See, the acceptance speech. I, I watched it on Sunday night. I didn't realise it wasn't live, to be honest. Yeah. But um, I quite liked the way it was to the point and didn't mess about. It was, he went up, he said thanks. So you're saying that he shouldn't have beaten up the uh, director? <laughs> Is that uh, what you're basically saying? It's a bit over the top. You thought I so? I mean, <laughs> if you didn't have time, if you really, I mean, what's what's the poem got to do with the the film anyway? He, he was an awards So do you think it's ever justified to beat up a TV director if you're a major Hollywood star? Depends what he's done, but I mean... <laughs> right, what would he have to have done, Carl, for it to be fine for him to then beat him up? The thing is, right, forget all the beating up. At the end of the day, it was a awards thing for a film. The poem had nothing to do with the film. Yeah. So go up, collect your award for that thing. And if you really, really wanted people to hear about this poem, he could have photocopied it and sure. left it at the entrance and said, on your way out, this is a really nice poem, pick one up. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the thing is... He knew it was televised, so he knew by saying that poem once, he was reaching five million people. That's a, not, that's a lot of photocopies. Do you see what I'm saying? I'm yeah, not saying it was justified. It wasn't, it wasn't a poem award. If it was a, an award show for poems, you'd say you can't cut it out. It'd be like doing the top 40 and then going, number one's good, but we haven't got time for it. But, <laughs> but it's a films thing. Okay. And he went up and he got the award for the film. Which film was it see, for? I don't know. But when I wanted to give you results... I said, I said, let's give Carl his results. Steve went, no, we should introduce people to Carl again. Just remind people what Carl's like. And he's so right. I'm so glad we did this first. <laughs> I'm all right, though. All right, Carry I'm on, wrong. Steve. Okay, the next, uh, the next topic. Um, what about this big debate over whether Kylie Minogue has had a bum job? I'd have to see it. <laughs> <laughs> next. <laughs> okay. Uh, what do you make of Will Young's single? He's the pop idol winner. Uh, it's going to uh, net record-breaking sales. Apparently, it's going to yeah. go straight to number one. He's had millions of copies sold. I heard last week that you had to, um, <laughs> if you wanted to buy it from Woolworths, you had to go in and put a pound down to guarantee you're getting a copy. Wow. I think that's stupid. But what do you make of it, though? Do you think what, um, as a song, as both as a song, and do you, are you excited about Will Young and his future? No, he'll do all right. I don't think we we have to worry about him. Okay. He'll, yeah, it will do all right. It's not my thing, but he seems like a nice bloke. Okay, good. Really good. Um, what one do you final make? One. Yeah, one final one then. Um, what do you make of our scientists getting the go-ahead to clone embryos for research? We have discussed cloning before, and obviously there's uh, the pros and cons of that. Christopher Reeve, former Superman star, he's behind this. Are you behind him? Yeah. I mean, with everything, you have your good and your bad, don't you? Yeah. At the end of the day. Uh, if you didn't have bad things in the world, then you wouldn't enjoy the good things. I think, you know, it's like if you didn't have robbers in the world, policemen wouldn't have a job. So it's the same thing. It's like, it's an illness. 
Yeah. So what 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 are they messing with? <laughs> it's probably a bit too detailed to go into there, really. But um, do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's it's good and bad. You can't have it all. Yin and yang is what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Carl, I can't argue with that, mate. Um, I want to play a track now that uh, I haven't heard for a while. It's the verb, isn't it? Yeah. Sonnet. Lovely song. Coming soon, those big exam results. <laughs> <laughs> Black Rebel Motorcycle Club, spread your love. It's time to give Carl. You're actually nervous. I, I'm a little bit nervous. Uh, just to uh, recap, Carl is 30 this year. He never went to get his results of his GCSEs. So myself and Steve took upon ourselves to phone his school, track them down, and we actually got your results. What did you think you took? Uh, did English. Right. Maths. Yeah. Uh, art. Right. Uh, and a I think I did physics. Okay. Well, you didn't do any of them. Eh? You didn't do any of them. You didn't register. You registered for one exam and took one exam and got results for one exam. So I don't know what you thought you were turning up to or you weren't registered or you didn't. You're familiar with the notion of registering for an exam. You have to kind of officially register in order to be eligible. What do you mean, register? I turned up for a couple. Yeah, you can't yeah. just show up. You have to <laughs> register for them. What you have you? to pay, because it costs the school money, so they have had to have paid for you if they thought you were going to pass. You can't just turn up on the day and ask some paper at the front. I never got a letter telling me that. Well, that's because you were never at school. But you did ma somehow register or registered for one exam. You registered for history. <laughs> <laughs> it's a topic that you've always been interested in. I, w I was saying to Ricky before, uh, World War Two. I loved it. Um, <laughs> not, I mean, not the actual event. No, the but study just of it. All you the mean. stuff like you know about the Anderson shelters and uh, stuff like that. Yeah. And the bombs and that. Mm -hmm. And um, and then when I took it, it had nothing to do with that. It was more about the Tudors. So it didn't. The Second World War didn't come up. You mean yeah. there were no questions about the Anderson shelters? Nothing. That's devastating. So. Well, so what are you expecting the result to be? Is that, seriously, is that it? Yeah, it's the only one you took and registered. As far for. as the school is concerned, or yeah. certainly well, it's in the only one that counts. Us. It's the only result, it's the only one that counts. Yeah, you've got... I don't... Did you register for yours? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. I have, yeah, I've got certificates and everything. So what, do you do that before the exam? Do you have to go somewhere <laughs> and sign something, or...? Yeah, you don't check your results and then decide if you want to register. It's not like millionaire, when you look at the question and go, oh, I think I'll take the money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you go... <laughs> <laughs> uh, no but anyway, you must have registered for one, or maybe your teacher put it in. Put you I in for well, it. I didn't do it. So they must have been confident. They must me. have been confident. They must have thought your best bet was history. <laughs> right. So, what did they get? Um, you got an E, which is, which I think, I mean, technically, is a pass. E. It's a bad pass, but there's F, C and there's I mean, you're not going to be doing a PhD. You, you, you can get an F. Right, which is fail, and then a U, which is ungraded. Now, I don't know why the U exists, because F means you failed. U is like them going, you not only failed, but you wasted my time. <laughs> so... <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <it>. <laughs> We're annoyed <laughs> yeah. that you took yeah. this exam. So, so you thought you... they'd register me to get an E? <laughs> well, they didn't, well, they didn't they, 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 they were hoping... It was rather like you with the lottery. They were hoping see, for something better than You nothing. see, I, I assume that the man who registered for that thought he can scrape an E if Anderson shout was come up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, oh. that's it. You've got, you've got... Now, what I'd like to do, Carl, is I've started your re-education. You've read a book on my shooting. I'll be asking you a few questions about that later. I've got another book for you to read next week. Next week, I've I'm not, got a I'm little... not in the mood. What? Not in the mood. Oh, come on. Look. What's that? What does that say? It's that fella... It's the picture of the bloke that he used to use for Citizen Smith. Yeah. Che Guevara. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he was quite happy, I think, when he found out that Robert Lindsay was involved. He went, yeah, of course you can. <laughs> no worries. No worries, yeah. What so, are your feelings, Carl? What, what, what do you what think? Are you depressed? You I'm just a bit annoyed, because I'm sure I turned up for more, so it just wasted me time. <laughs> Listen, yeah. they don't matter. I'm, I'm sure you're I doing, You're doing more. very well. You, you, you know, you can educate yourself. Uh, GCSEs are merely a step on the ladder to help you, not just for education, but, you know, they're, they're, they're more vocational than anything else. You're doing very well. And you're reading books. Don't worry about it. But it's not a good thing. But if you want, if you want, 
I'll pay for you to take history again. Carl, we'd love to see you get a C or above. And well, we're I'll, willing I'll pay to for you and I'll get you some books. Right, now listen, listen, listen. Um, we can, look, look let, let's get, I, I reckon, wh when are the exams? June? Something like that, yeah. We're registered, we're trying to register next week and I reckon you can get an A or B. In, I'm history. Busy, I'm busy. in history, no, oh. don't worry about it. It's just easy. You get your Brody's notes. If Heat Heat magazine, they 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 love you, Carl. They can probably sort something out. They can probably pay for a tutor. They got a lot of money. They sell a lot of magazines. I mean, it is always, almost always, and you found that out. I discovered this. It's always the tutors and stewards. There's no fear for that. They're not coming up. Now, what do you know? What do you already know about them? You must know already know stuff about Henry VIII and Elizabeth. No, because it just. It's too long ago to even get interested in. Do you know what I mean? You can't Is that why you didn't... It. Okay. You d the Anderson thing, it was like, God, you know, I bet my mum and dad were in an Anderson shelter. You know, this is interesting. What, when they... Oh, my granddad would have, like, had something to do with this. <laughs> but the Tudors, it's like, I don't know even if they had a family back then. God. <laughs> <laughs> Play record. If we come back. Hang to on, this. hang sorry, on, hang on. I just sorry. sorry. No, I just because I need to introduce my new the, the new feature. Yeah. For the I record. don't know if I had a family back then. Come on, listen. Let me just ask you now, right? If you can finish this sentence, we've got a chance. Divorce beheaded died. Divorce beheaded died. What is it? We just need to do a little bit of work, but otherwise, I think you're going to be fine. It's how you remember what happened to Henry VIII's wives. Their little divorce beheaded died. Divorce beheaded. Uh, it's like spam. Support, what's it? Support, protection, anchorage, movement. That's how you're going to. That's nothing to do with the children's No, nothing to do with the skeleton. <laughs> yeah. See, no, we're not doing Demonics biology. Demonics and uh, acronyms. What, and what happened to Henry VIII's last wife? Did she die or did she not die? Divorce beheaded, died. Divorce beheaded. Do you know that the only king that has got a moustache <laughs> is. No. <laughs> the only king that hasn't got a moustache is the King of Arts on the playing cards. What's the record you play? Um, I want to resurrect the career king of, of a different artist each week. This is an artist who's overlooked by the general public. It's a red card. <laughs> this is Amy Mann, and she always seems to get overlooked. This was a single a while back. Well, I think it's called eye. Red Vines. Play it, Carl. Fantastic. You see, what upsets me is the way that Amy Mann, yeah. she's written songs as good as that, she's yeah. released it as a single, she had to, I think, put the album from which that's taken out by herself over the internet, she was Oscar nominated yeah. for the songs in the film Magnolia, she couldn't get a record label, I don't know if she's now got one, and yet there's people like Alanis Morissette shifting that is well, shed loads beautiful. of songs, I don't that understand fantastic. what the rules are, I don't know why she, she's not a household Carl, name. well there's what? beautiful things like that in the world, why do you care about epoxy well, GCSE? What, what did she get for history? <laughs> what did she get for history? Yeah. I think she did very poorly. <laughs> Why do you care? See, I was going to say, this is backfired a little bit, because Carl is genuinely, I don't know if he's actually upset or embarrassed, but it doesn't matter. It, why does it matter? You were, you were 15 and didn't go to school. If you were my friends, I think you would have just said, oh, we can't find them. Why? Because but you just wanted matter, to know. What to do with that? Well, what do you mean? What do you mean? It's ridiculous. Do it, do it again because you want to learn. Because there's like there's great things in the world to learn about. Don't worry. The GCC is vocation. Is you know is vocationally for a 15, 16 year old to go on to do A levels or or whatever or to get results. But you don't you don't you don't need that because you've done very well. Um, you, oh, you oh, don't oh, care oh. about the Tudor and the Stuarts. I mean, d d you know. I mean, I've had a couple of jobs. Not this one because you don't need qualifications to get get a job. Obviously, yeah. in the radio. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. Yeah. Right. But yeah. the ones that I have got. In the past, I did because I didn't collect them. I had to lie, and I didn't. I didn't like go mad. I didn't say I had A's and stuff. <laughs> but I think. I mean, I didn't put history down because I didn't even know I did it. Like, <laughs> so it's a bonus. I, I, I kind of treated myself to like a D and a couple of C's and that. So it's like, well, he's not. I know. love the fact that <laughs> Carl even then was honourable. It's like yeah, yeah, I'll yeah. at least put down the ones I think I took and lie, but the ones yeah. I didn't take, yeah. I won't lie about. Yeah, it. and and don't give yourself a B. <laughs> exactly. If they're going to find out you lied, give yourself a B no, next well, it time, Carl. It could backfire, couldn't it? I mean, my brother's a bit mental, and he used to do things like go for jobs and say, "Oh yeah, I've done this before." Like being a, a mechanic, and he's never even picked up a spanner, <laughs> and yet he'd have the confidence to go and f try and fix cars. <laughs> well, I'm not that daft, but God, an E. Do, do, who who do you blame for this? That's just an easy way out. I have to blame myself. Don't yeah. I? What was but the teacher like? 
Well, there's loads of different ones. I didn't like... I mean, the history teacher, she... It is my own fault, because with her, she's a bit mental. And I used to kind of stop the lesson by saying, Oh, miss, tell us about your your um, fireplace you've got that is made from a gravestone. Because that's what <laughs> That would had. stop any interest teacher in their no, tracks. And she loved telling you about it. Yeah. So it was like, oh, I learned that from a teacher. So that's why I didn't know about divorce, head loss, <laughs> and all that. Yeah. Dandruff legs. Because Horse head loss, dandruff legs. But rem- remember now, divorce beheaded died, divorce beheaded survived. That's all you got to remember. And what, what's that? That's the, what happened to uh, Henry VIII's various In order. Wives. In order. What does it spell out? No, it doesn't spell out doesn't spell <laughs> no, anything. You just got to remember it. the rhythm. I, I, in order, in the order in which he married. Yeah, but it helps. It's like when my mum <laughs> taught me the alphabet, she taught me as like a song. A, and like B, C, constant. D, e, F, G. Yeah, constant. Yeah. T- no, not like that. Huh. That's how everyone else could do it, and I couldn't do it that way. <laughs> what that tune did she do it to? D, it was uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. X. Dandy Warhols, get off on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. With me, Steve Merchant. Hello. It's five past two on the day that Carl, our producer, found out that he had an E in history, GCSE, and nothing else because he didn't actually register. I can't believe he registered for that. I don't know. I didn't. That's Someone else put you in. They, they, they can't have put you in because you were away. They probably said, oh, you know, they didn't, you didn't register in that. Listen, obviously, you're feeling a little bit melancholy because melancholy, it's, you know, it's, it's, like, it's like you're hearing it for the first time, so it's like you're 16 again. But you, it was to be expected. But no, listen, I, I it doesn't matter. It actually it doesn't, doesn't matter. It doesn't. But listen, but listen, take it again. Take it again, for your just, just, is there, is there a history teacher listening? Um, what's the number? 07, 08700, 800, 123. They can tell us the syllabus this year. 1234, is it? Yeah. Oh, sorry, what is it? 08700. And I did, I got, I've got maths. Uh, Uh, 08700, 800, 1234. Mine's more laziness that I couldn't be able to say that last digit, really. I've done the, yeah, the, most of the work. Yeah, let's not. Let, if we get onto your problems, <laughs> <laughs> then we're going to be. It's a whole other show. It doesn't matter really, because like you say, right? I've done all right for myself. Yeah. It's that. It's that old thing of like, um, when you get older, if you find out that your dad's not your dad, it's like it doesn't matter. He was a dad to me. Absolutely. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Absolutely. So. Are you saying Mr. Nuttall wasn't your real teacher? <laughs> <laughs> Give out the number again, Rick. What are we after? Um, 08700 800 1234. Is no there a history a teacher history. out there that may know how we can? Is he too late to register this time? What's the syllabus this it? year? What's the syllabus this year? Do we have to pay for it? And does he want to earn like 25 quid cash in hand to give Carl a couple of lessons? I'll stump that up. Take it, yeah? It'd be great. It'd be fantastic. They probably won't want to do it though. We'll it's film thing, it. It'd it? be a documentary on choice. <laughs> <laughs> Heat magazine be right behind it. There'd be, you know, little clues. We could have a little question and answer, little quizzes. You know what I mean? Be Rick, great. before we play the next record, I've just been looking through the XFM gig guide, and I just want to let you know that uh, at Spitz this evening, Commercial Street E1, doors at 8 o'clock, <laughs> Gut Bucket are playing. <laughs> so, no, I just a lot of people, listeners will probably want to know that. <laughs> so I don't want anyone to miss out on the Gut Bucket gig at Spitz tonight, Commercial Street E1. Brilliant. That's a good plug for the uh, the Gut Bucket boys. Well, ladies and um, gentlemen, welcome to the stage. Now, Steve just played one of the most beautiful records. I mean, that, uh, uh, so uh, I've got up the ante here, and I'm going I'm to play another Jimmy Webb track. I played it off 10 Easy Pieces. Uh, last week, and I have played this track before, but a different version. You'll know it, um, obviously, better by Glen Campbell. He wrote a lot of songs for Glen Campbell. And this is Galveston, and this is absolutely beautiful. Jimmy Webb there, and uh, Galveston. You see, and during that, Carl said, what's this about? Didn't you? See, th- things you're interested in, you see? If only that inc- you were that inquisitive when the Tudors and Stuarts came up, you'd have you'd have a C or so a B. So we don't even do Stuarts. Don't you? It's just Tudors. Oh, they're the worst, aren't they? <laughs> Stuarts, I've got a lot of time for. The Tudors can, f- you know what I mean? Listen, right, as you know, I, I lent Carl, part of his education, his historical education, I lent Carl um, Gladiator, the movie on DVD, which he watched on his PlayStation 2. And uh, Rasputin. Do you know last week when you gave me this, did you know my result for history? No. That's weird, isn't it? 
Yeah. Now, uh, right, okay, it's the film review. Carl, you just, just tell it from the heart, tell us what you thought about the film, what you thought the- Can I just ask, is this the first time you'd seen Gladiator? You'd never seen it before? No. Okay. And what were your thoughts? Okay. <laughs> the film review. <laughs> Gladiator. Um, it's alright. Noth nothing great. Uh, it's like, it's like an old, um, sort of an old version of Rocky done in the olden days, really. Right. A bloke fighting other people. Sure. Um, how, how sort of well known is the story? Do you reckon people know the, the basics? Well, just very, very quickly, just do right, the plot. Quickly. There's a guy called Max. Um, Maximus, yeah. Yeah. There's Caesar, and there's Caesar's kid, and uh, Max goes to war, sort of wins it, comes back. Uh, Caesar says, you're good at what you do. I wish my son was as good as you. Uh, so I want you to be in charge when I die. His kid finds out, a bit annoyed about it, kills his dad, because he doesn't want anyone to hear that he said that he wants him to be in charge. Yeah. So his kid gets in charge and thinks, I'll show you. You're not going to be a king. I am. You're going to be a slave or something. And then... Next thing you see is... My, sorry, can I just stop there? My only thought is the film's three hours long, so <laughs> maybe we should we, go through the we, whole plot. We, right? we've, we've done the first ten minutes, but yeah. go on. So, yeah, he's a slave and then... Yeah, but then, that, that, that was an interesting bit that I thought, right? I mean, I was watching this with a girlfriend and she was already annoyed because she wanted to watch Friends on E4. Okay. <laughs> so... <laughs> Yeah. So, it was a good episode as well this week. Was it? Yeah. Don't tell her that. Okay. Right. So um, oh. so she so she was annoyed and she said, "Come on then, put it on." <laughs> and I got it wrong straight away because it says on the back 149. So I thought that was an hour and 49 minutes. It turned out it was 149. No, I thought it was one hour 49. Yeah. But it was 149 minutes. Sure. So it it overran anyway. By 40 minutes. Yeah. So anyway, the interesting bit was where he was going across the desert on a horse. And I think to show you how long he'd been going across the desert on his horse, he's showing you a shot of the horse's knees and they were bleeding. <laughs> and I just wondered whether that's what horses do if they run for a long time. Can, do you know? I don't. Good. Right, so anyway, so it goes on, get, it keeps going on like this. Um, he's a slave and then he has a fight at the end with the Caesar's kid and he kills him. And that, that's how it ended. Okay, good. What did you think of it? Just generally, what what bits? What do you think was wrong with it? Right. Well, I've read up on it, and there's already a, a fact that is wrong. Right. Max. No, Caesar's kid. He didn't actually kill his dad. His dad died of a natural death. Right. In real life, you mean? In, yeah. Okay. And um, what's what's Caesar's kid's name? Co comedian or something. Comedy. I think it's comedian. Yeah. Yeah. That's where the name comes from. The, the, when you, yeah, you know, a funny person is called a comedian. He didn't imagine. actually get killed in real life by Max. No. He died by his sister poisoning him, and um, and he didn't. Da no, no. Are no. you saying? Are you saying that this is not a historical document? It's it's oh, it's wrong. All over the place. Yeah. Well, in terms week, of well, next week I'm giving you Braveheart, and that is actually true. That is actually that, that is that is. Factually no, accurate. I can't handle it. It is, it is. It was a little Listen, Australian fella that helped him out. Just for people who watched it, Go you on. know that the the um uh, the the guy, Caesar's kid. Yeah. He died. Uh his sister tried to poison him, that didn't work. And apparently he was a gay fella. And his boyfriend who was a wrestler strangled him. That's well, where did you story. get this information? On the internet. I thought I'd look it up to see how much of it I actually got right. Yes. <laughs> And that's what I read. Okay, so uh, out of ten? <sighs> Five. Really? Yeah. Okay. It's no good. I wouldn't, I wouldn't get it out. And what, it's annoying the way it says, like, you know, this film's got to be seen at the cinema, because I saw it at home, and I don't think I missed out on anything. Very good point. I think that's the, probably the point they're making, but yours is, yours is valid too. We'll play a record, and after that, I'm going to ask you about Rasputin, the Mad Monk. Travis and Sing. I like that. That's all right. It's a bit. It's a bit easy. It's not their best. I like their earlier stuff a little bit better, you know. But what I don't like is them throwing around mollusks. I don't like it when that poor little octopus gets flung around. I know it's dead, but there's something. There's a certain lack of respect for the 
for the mollusk for the community. for the squid and yeah. the octopi fraternity. Like I said to you, when I used to go to Wales for my holidays, mm-hmm. they used to get washed up on the beach, and people used to go over them on the motorbikes, <laughs> and they were sh- cheering and stuff. And it's just like, do you, do you realise what you're doing? Yeah, yeah. sick, isn't it? But anyway, uh, Gladiator. Just was going to add on the end of that. Um, if you're into that sort of film, Jason and the Argonauts is probably your better bet. <laughs> is that factually uh, accurate? Did you look that up or not? Did, did, did skeletons actually come out of the ground and fight? Yeah. You? I don't know, but it's a more enjoyable film. Okay. And okay. It's shorter. Okay. Now, um, just moving um, quickly on, just the last item on Carl's re-education this week. Uh, Rasputin. You read a little book about Rasputin. Uh, what did you know about Rasputin before you read the book, Carl? Can I just tell you, oh. when I handed him this book, it was my house, I said, well, he, went, he went, oh, is he the one that lived under the bridge? <laughs> and I went, what do you mean? He went, the fellow that lived under the bridge and he had to, he went, and you had to pass him with a, with a, and Jane um, went, you're thinking of um, Rapunzel. And he went, yeah. And I went, well, that's not Rapunzel either. <laughs> Rapunzel, Rapunzel's, you had to say, isn't that, you know, you had to guess his The person who lived on the bridge was a troll in the three little yeah, book graphs. Yeah, I'm a troll, Foldy well. So, to answer your question, Steve, that's what he knew about <laughs> Rasputin, okay? So, have you read this whole book? Can I just have a look at it, Rick? This whole book, it's about the size of a beer mat. Yeah, yeah. I'm just thinking, but did, did, so did you read the whole thing? No. You didn't well, manage you to read didn't the whole thing? you didn't even do that? Well, Again, some of the names in there are so long and foreign sounding that I just thought, <laughs> I can't, I can't remember all these. So I no. just got to the meat of the story. Go on, okay, what, and what did you learn from about Rasputin? Right, um, he was, um, he was a monk. Yep. And, um... Uh, mad? He... Was he a mad monk? Hang on a minute. Don't, Don't confuse him. Sorry. Right. Go on. Um, God. You see, this is what happened in the exams. <laughs> <laughs> Right, he was, he was... Oh, don't do that when I'm drinking, Carl, was, please, mate. He loved his women. And that's how, how the story started off. Uh, he had really <laughs> nice... The story started off? Yeah. He had really nice eyes, and that's what everyone fell for, especially the women. Yeah. Anyway, they thought, the people back then thought he had special powers, because um, he could hypnotise people or something. Oh, yeah. And it was about a little lad who um, <laughs> who had some sort of blood clot on his leg. And, um, and he said, just calm down. And you'll be all right. And people thought he had special powers, but what it was, what he was doing, he was saying, calm down, and he relaxed, and it stopped the blood flowing sort of as fast. Mm. And that's how he got better. But anyway, that's the only bit of special work that he did. And then he kept going on, and he was going in brothels and all that. And um, and the people in the town thought, this isn't right. He shouldn't be going about doing this. And um, Where did he live? Uh, Russia. Right. Is that right? Yep. What sort of era? I thought you'd might know, you know, know sort about of... 1800. Okay. All right. Okay. And, um, and then... Do you want to check that, Steve? You got the book? People well, got I know sick for a fact him. that's not right. People got <laughs> sick of him and um, and they said, oh, we'll have to get rid of him. So they tried to... He, he loved cakes as well as women. Okay. So they said, let's poison a cake. <laughs> and they poisoned a load of Easier cakes. Easier than poisoning a woman, wouldn't and, it? And... Uh, <laughs> And he had these cakes, and it just didn't kill him, and they, they were like, God, what's going on? And they kept giving him more and more cakes, and... <laughs> he was <laughs> suspicious. <laughs> and that didn't work, so the fella said, that's it, I'm going to shoot him. So... <laughs> <laughs> well, I imagine it was the end of his tether. So... I mean, he was back and forth to Mr. Kipling's, he you shot, know, like, He shot him once, and that didn't work, and the fella thought, oh my God. And he started running away, and Rasputin's running after him. And he shoots him like another. I think he took four. Face bullets. full of uh, Battenberg. Four, f- four bullets. Who's gonna swear then? Four bullets. It took to kill him, and then this fella who was after him chucked him in an icy lake, and that was the end of him. But I don't understand, sort of. What don't you understand, Carl? Well, the fact that you know he's a bit of a name in history, and I don't understand why, because <laughs> it just sounds a bit like my brother. <laughs> Does he love women and cakes? And do you think that'll be his downfall? <laughs> right, I want you to study. Right, if you want to do, uh, that's the first introduction. Right, if you want to do some extracurricular what would that um, get stuff, me? get there's there's a song by Boney M that yeah, yeah, lays yeah. it out. Suzanne told me about that, saying about uh, Russia's greatest love machine. Yeah, but it didn't say anything about cakes. No, so I think if you get the twelve inch, no, but they, 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 they said it, it, according to Boney M, and I don't know who's who's correct. The bloke wrote that or M. Um, they put some poison into his wine. Now, I don't know if uh, uh, M have done their research mm-hmm. or whether, yeah, uh, they did shoot him until he was dead. 
Um, it, I probably thought he was the greatest love machine in Russia. I, again, I don't think it says that in the book, but no. M might know more than that fella. So, what's your know. final verdict on uh, Ra Ra Rasputin? Just, um, just a normal bloke who didn't have that much luck, really. I, you know, I, that's that's what I don't understand. I was waiting for something special at the end, but. Just a normal fellow, really. Yeah. yeah, just an everyday... That was all the time, didn't it? Just an everyday mad monk. Yeah, just an everyday mad monk. You have to shoot and poison and throw in icy lakes to kill him. And uh, who uh, loves women and cakes? I mean, come on, do we need another one of them? <laughs> Boring. So oh. what would you say about him, then? How would you sum him up? I think you've done it. I think you've done it. There you go. So next week, Che Guevara, are you going to read the book? I don't know. Come yeah, on. Next week, Che Guevara. Take it home. There he is. Give it over. Yeah. Good luck. Cheers. Uh, Richard X. Sugar Babes are freaks electric. Are they, Carl? Dunno. I feel like, uh, it feels like Christmas Day. What, and you didn't get the gift you wanted? Yeah, do you know that, like, anti-climax? Yeah. When, uh, You've been looking forward to it for so long. Yeah, you know. Well, I mean, I knew you were looking forward to it. That's why it took you 14 years <laughs> to get the result, and then it was two other people that got them for you. Do you so wish I... that we hadn't done it? Uh, nah. It's all right. It's all right, isn't it? What's your girlfriend going to say? I don't think I'll see her again. <laughs> <laughs> she, she likes a man who knows about the Tudors and Stuarts, does she? Yeah, first gladiator, then the. Yeah, you've been bluffing. She goes, whenever she said, "Where's it go?" Stuarts go. Good. Like, <laughs> yeah. lot, lots of things, but I, uh, look, 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 it's a bird. What happened to Henry VIII's last wife? Oh, oh I wouldn't, I, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, look, Friends is on telly. <laughs> Friends is on. <laughs> no, yeah. I just changed the subject by saying things like, you know, about the, the only king in a pack of cards. <laughs> <laughs> that threw off the scent. That <laughs> threw us off the scent. That, would, that wouldn't fool an invigilator, would it? Mm. That's the thing. You can't use that one. Uh, with an exam board. Carl, have yeah. you ever logged on to Friends Reunited? It was the site that everyone was talking about last year. No. Are you aware of the concept? I've heard about it, but there's no one from school who I'd, who I'd want to see up again, with. really. So basically, for those that don't know, you have to log on to his website and then you can help, it helps you track down your old schoolmates if they've also logged on and stuff. And uh, we took the liberty, really, of, of looking on the Friends Reunited site and typing in your school and trying to track down any of your old mates. We didn't get in touch with any of them, don't we? We didn't do that. We're we not going to surprise you with them now. No. But I was just interested to know, like, some of your thoughts on some of the names that I could run past you. I mean, these are people from your year. Um, just tell me if you recognise the names. Alison Birch? I think I remember her. What's your thought? What's your thoughts on it? Uh, don't don't girl, don't be libelous. Don't yeah. say. Don't be like no. No, um, posh. Uh, probably did pretty well in history and that. <laughs> Sarah Morris. God, yeah. Remember her. Go on. You're grinning. What's the thought? <laughs> Go on. No, just um, she was all right. She was a popular one. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> it was, she was nice. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. What about uh, Darren Buckley? He was, uh, he was one of my best mates. Was he really? Yeah. Seriously? Yeah. What do you reckon he's doing now? Do you still keep in touch? Um, when my mum and dad were still in Manchester and they had a booty shop, he used to go in because the bookies was next door. <laughs> <laughs> I love the way he paints a picture. If, to, uh, if you did this in your history exam, Carl, you will walk it. Go on. So you, your parents had a butty shop, there was a bookies next door? Yeah, and he, he, he liked having a bit of a gamble, so he used to, um, I think he works for some insurance company. Do you think that his fiance Beth knows he's got a gambling problem? <laughs> Yeah, or that his two-year-old son, Lewis. <laughs> no. Yeah, they live in Cheadle Home. Hume. Uh, Cheadle Hume. He must be doing well. Cause it's He's still supporting the Blue Army and frequents the shrine on a fortnightly basis. The funny thing with him is, right, when um, I used to stay over at his house and um, his dad was a copper. And um, uh, I remember his dad came down and said, right, I want to see you two. I was like, oh, God, what's happened? And um, got us round the, round the table. He said, um, do you know much about drugs? So we were like, well, what's all this about? So he goes, you know, they, they're not they're not good for anyone, you know, the stupid thing to get into. And we're like, yeah, we know. And he went, you know, do you? He said, yeah. He said, what's this then? And he'd found something in his bedroom and it was a skittle. <laughs> what the sweet? Do you know little sweets with the S on it? And he <laughs> oh, knew really? About drugs. <laughs> yeah. So he said, well, yeah, it's a skittle. Yeah, I know what it is. 
He oh, he was bluffing like that was a slang word. Yeah, he thought, he thought, because he was a copper, he probably had to be down with all the terms and that. So we said, oh, it's a skittle. And he, he said, yeah, yeah, I know what it is, but what's it doing in your bedroom? <laughs> oh. It was like, no, it's a toffee. <laughs> so, uh, no, Darren, uh, yeah, I know, it's a toffee, it's a squib, <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a, yeah. Carl, more people from your, uh, past. Debbie Carr? Yeah, she was, uh, she was another nice one. one <laughs> what one, does that mean? Is that a euphemism? No, she was one of them that you'd sort of go, she's nice, but you, she'd never be your girlfriend. Do you know what I mean? She was, Not really. Even though she was in the same year, she seemed a lot older. Right. And like, Wasn't a teacher, was it? There was, there was three of them who all hung together and they seemed to hang around like the older kids, the ones who looked like men. Do you know what I mean? The yeah. What did you look like, like then? Well, it's just that I, I had youthful sort of looks, sure. whereas like the older ones had like beards and stuff. <laughs> It's the gang of boys in the fifth form with beards. <laughs> Were they smoking pipes? <laughs> Go, come over here, me filly. <laughs> oi, you, you, oi, Debbie Carr, come over here, you little beauty. No, but she was like... I love that. Oh, like... Hanging around with beards. There's the big boys. What oh, a fishing. <laughs> That's lovely beards. What do you I mean? just see a, a whole row of George Bernard Shaw's. <laughs> Brilliant. How do you do in history, boy? <laughs> yeah. They got an E. You're an idiot. Oh. They, they were like, um, you know, I'd be there sort of playing punching people in the arm. Cause he's oh, yeah. oh, that's a great game. Oh, I love that, punch people in the arm. Is that part of the Olympics now? <laughs> it's, 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 I think it was exhibition this year. Right. But it's, it's going uh, to be pro next year. It's going to be the Winter Olympics because you've got to do it in uh, just a cap sleeve shirt sure. in winter. Um, yeah, but, yeah. Uh, yeah. So you're uh, playing that. She, uh... <laughs> But, whilst but I she was didn't appreciate that. that. She used to go, ow! <laughs> <laughs> no, I always think whilst I was doing that, they were like the Charlie's Angels and they'd be sorting out a mission somewhere. Because they were really like, there was something about them that yeah. you thought, you know, yeah, they're special. They, they were private they detectives. What do they work for a man they never see? <laughs> okay, yeah. well, th th here's a name I'm interested in because, uh, well, let me just tell you the name first. Uh, Adam Clifton. Mm. Oh. Go what? on, what are your thoughts on Clifton? Uh, he was one of them kids. He was all right, but... He had that thing when, um, if you didn't have enough milk, <laughs> he had like, uh, wrinkly hands and, and like, white, white bits in his nails. Oh! Because yeah. he didn't have enough milk. Yeah. yeah. So therefore, you didn't like him because you didn't get enough milk. This is not to be confused with the two people with the big heads and the webbed feet, is it? Webbed hands. Well, this was well, interesting. I know that they were related. They must have been somewhere along the evolutionary sort of trail, do you know what I mean? They must have come from the same sort of stock. But no, you, you wouldn't have liked him. He's just, he's just one of them people. He was all right, but... He, he well, can I, before well. you say any more, um, on, the, on Friends United, you can leave a little message which explains what you've been doing and uh, what's, what your, you know, your life's like now. And most people leave maybe two paragraphs. Yeah. Adam, I've printed it off. He seems to have printed... I think it's, there's about six pages here of stuff. He keeps updating it. And he, he just basically lists his memories about everyone. Okay, at yeah. school and uh, what he thinks of everyone. And uh, he says, I often see Simon, da 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 da, he's doing alright for himself, self employed illustrator, Mark Cooper, Carl Pilkington. Right. And your name comes up. Now, I don't know if you've told us this story, I think you may have done, but I can't remember the facts about it. It just says, Carl Pilkington with his pet bird. Was it a magpie? I can't remember. He brought it to school to show everyone and it flew away. <laughs> No, they do that, don't they? You show them the what what you was give, the story? You give, them, you give them seed and they just leave. The, what do you mean? Well, this sounds like Kez. Well, that's <laughs> it. I was a big fan of Kez, and um, <laughs> it was the time our dog had just died. Yeah. So I didn't have any pets, and the cats were always getting run over. <laughs> yeah. And um, so we didn't want any more pets. Yeah. But there was a magpie that used to fly about on the estate, and I managed to um, sort of tame it. And, um, in the end... With, it with became, a chair and a whip? What do you mean you tamed it? Well, just used to sort of hang around it and talk But how did you it. get hold of it? Did you catch it? Well, eventually, yeah, it used to just come to me and I, The annoying thing was, it got to a point when I wish I hadn't bothered. Because it, <laughs> it used to pop me bike tyres. It used to... It used to sit on, on like, if I was talking to my mates and I was on my grifter. I love the way he just throws things in! <laughs> it's like an Alan, Alan Bennett play. <laughs> It, it landed on my tyre and it used to peck at the tyre and pop it and then oh, it, used to, no. it used to then never go away so it was always like <laughs> around the house and my dad said never bring it in. So it used to sit on the porch and I used to go out and it used to fly down and land on my head oh. and it really hurt. It used to like peck and stuff. <laughs> he thought it was a tyre. <laughs> so it wasn't so much tamed <laughs> as a stalker. <laughs> oh god. Yeah. So you took it to school and it flew away? Yeah. So did you take it in proudly going look at my magpie? Oh. 
Yeah. <laughs> oh, but no. It, it, I think it got a bit confused in the area that it was in, because I used to just keep it sort of around our estate, but sure. the school was a bit of a distance away. How did you get it so, there? Carrying it on my finger. Did you walk? Yeah. <laughs> wow. So it was happy people there, and then it got... It. To, huh? it used to be one of those things that people would stop me in the street and sort of go, oh, what's that? And, and did, I don't Maggie. suppose you... called it Maggie. You didn't get uh, Charlie's Angels to go and find out what happened to it? <laughs> Investigate? Were they impressed? No, not really. No. But Listen, go on, any... any like Carl, let's come names. back to me. Let's come back to it. Let's have uh, a hip hop hooray track. It's the big hip hop selection from Big Steve Merchant. Uh, I don't know what I'm talking about there. <laughs> Just trying to sound hip. This is Spearhead from many years back. Uh, a track again, I think, got largely overlooked at the time, but worth hearing again. People in the middle. <sighs> Right. Spearhead, people in the middle. Michael Franti, surely one of the greatest uh, rappers, I think. He just, if you've, ever, if you've ever heard him bust it live, Rick, he's almost as good as me. I'm just going to tell the, uh, the, uh, the listeners there, Carl, this is quite a little insecure sort of chap, and he was just worried about that last bit. He was going, who would ever find that interesting? He was worried about people finding him boring. And Steve said, as I said, you know, it's, it's like an Alan Bennett thing. He went, yeah, but... You know, no one would care about Alan Bennett if he wasn't such a hit maker. They wouldn't care what to say. And we just looked at him for a while and he went, Ah, oh, thinking of Tony Bennett. <laughs> Bless him. Listen, it's almost the end of the show, Carl. Oh, yeah. And it's really been a Carl special. I it says a Carl special, it? yeah. Well, next week, we won't we're, be we're getting this next, next week. week. We have to we're know. Not gonna, uh... He's, he wants to retire a little bit. Just, uh... Well, those old uh, lottery numbers might come up tonight anyway. Exactly. You might. What are they again? What's the four you've got with? I've put them away now. What? Come on, well, give us all six. No. Why? Carl, while you're um, rummaging for that... 5, 9, 12 and 26. A few more names that you may recall from Friends Reunited. Go on. Lisa Shufflebotham? <laughs> Do you remember her? Yeah, she... Uh, Was she one of Charlie's Angels? She, no, no, she wasn't that nice, but she wanted me. <laughs> <laughs> her, and, her and her mate Rachel, I remember, I don't know why, but it was some sort of PE lesson where it had to be a bloke and two girls. And they were fighting over me. <laughs> and Could you hear what they were saying? They, were, you just, they, they were just like, I want him. And I, I was loving it. Stuck in the middle and they were fighting over me. And then the next week I thought, I'll sit near them What again. sort of game do they play at this school? Amazing. I don't know. That's an incredible game. But I think Punch just, me on the arm. No, punch me on the arm, they, Carl. They just, they just went through it. Because the following week I thought, right, I'll sit near them again because I quite enjoyed the way they fighted over me. But then they picked somebody else and... I don't know. Always with that week. So d you didn't uh, didn't get any action with Shuffle Both or more, friend? No. And what? then as she got older, she went a bit off. <laughs> she didn't, she didn't that good. She's probably nice now. It's just, I mean, I'll say about myself when when you get to sort of the end of secondary school, you do sort of go a bit odd looking. Right. Do you know what I mean? When your yeah, sort yeah. of head grows funny. <laughs> I, lo I, lo I would just love to go back to his school of that era. I mean. Just what happened to people where they're, you know, all people sprouting limbs and No, do you know what things. I mean? When, when you're like 12 and that, you, you're quite, no, not 12, when you're 10, when you're 7 to 10, you sort of look healthy and you look at your pictures when you go, yeah, I was a good looking lad. But then when you get to mm. late secondary school, something happens yeah. and you just look a bit odd. Okay, well, what about Alison Thorpe? <laughs> not sure about her. I, I sort of know the name, can't put a face to it. Damien Co uh, Comer? Again. Know the name. Yeah. Can't remember anything. No. Yeah. It's a shame. Well, those are pretty much all the names I could find. We've had some interesting thoughts, though, and interesting anecdotes. Yeah. Anyone yeah. in particular that you'd like to uh, to say hello to that uh, maybe maybe listening now that no, you? No, I think I would have mentioned Darren Buckley if you hadn't brought him up. Oh right. He was, he was like my buddy. Yeah. yeah. Did so. you ever see the um, uh, Magpie game when you took it to the school and confused it? No. You're joking. That was the end of it, was it? Yeah. So where did it go? Probably. Uh, to some other kid, because I mean, oh. it actually, it probably got killed. Because <laughs> if if it was being that friendly with other people, some people might have took advantage of it. <laughs> in what way? Well, there was a program on the other week about what in the way that shuffle both of them was trying to take advantage of you. Well, <laughs> yeah. There was a program on the other week about bear whisperers. Yeah. And uh, some blokes got really friendly with a bear, and then the, the, when they were leaving that area where the bear was, they said, "Oh, we've caused a problem here because there's some bear hunters coming in and moving into this area." Yes. And it's going to get a bullet if it, if it acts like this. So they had to scare it away, and that's what I should have done with, with Maggie. I should have terrified it a little bit so yeah. it wouldn't trust humans. 
<laughs> just introduced it to some of your schoolmates, I'm sure, would have <laughs> yeah. freaked it right out. Well, the ones with Maybe the that was heads. why it fled. It, it didn't yeah, see, it, oh, no, it didn't see those two fellas with big heads and webbed hands coming towards it, did it? That would have terrified anything. It's like a scarecrow, like two walking <laughs> scarecrows. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, have we got time for a song for the ladies? What's, what's happening? Oh. We've, we've not really thought. Quick then, quick, just do it, just do it. Thanks very much. Well, hang on, no, no, we haven't li- li- lined anything up, have we? I was gonna play, uh, Mary Lawson and that for you. And then Is this gonna be the final track? It has to yeah, be. Yeah, it would be, yeah. We've blown it. We've blown it on the Carl special. We have indeed. I'll play it next week. So, Carl there's got an E at history in GCSE. Hang any on. history teachers, anyone who can help Carl out, I think we should try and register him and take it this June. So, uh, So what's your homework for this week? Soon. You've uh, got to read about Che Guevara, haven't yeah. you? The revolutionary leader. Yeah. Okay. Do you know anything about him at all? Have you got any basis? I just know that if you want to use his face on your business, it costs a lot of money. <laughs> Do you know, like, if, if McDonald's wanted to have him as, like, instead of Ronald McDonald? <laughs> how does he do it? Steve, how does he do it, man? Oh, we, we, listen, just, just play a final record, Carl. Say goodbye and we'll, uh, see you next week. All right. See you later. Bye. Cheers, mate. Oh, yeah.